This episode of Out of Spec Reviews is brought to you by Magna. More on that later. Hey, welcome back to the Out of Spec Podcast and Out of Spec Reviews. We are double posting this one because we want to make some awareness to our podcast, which is weekly, sometimes twice a week. And we are doing a view or a video on Out of Spec Reviews to talk about our wrap up, our thoughts on the Rivian because we spent a week, felt like a month, but we spent a week, <laughs> sometimes sleepless nights. <laughs> Multiple. Yeah, working with this truck and figuring literally everything out that we could. Um, I think what it taught us is that we need it for two weeks, really. A, a Six week, months. Well, <laughs> I mean, look, when we... So, so a lot of automotive journalists will get a car for a week. That's like your standard amount of time, right? So you'll get, and we do a couple a week anyway, just, just on rotation from what's in our local fleets. But when, when you evaluate an electric car, specifically not even just an electric car, but the first of a new electric vehicle type, an electric pickup truck, mm -hmm. there's so many tests, not even just vehicle specific, but to test that category of situation that's coming up. And so... The Rivian is the first production electric truck to make it to us, at least. I don't know if the Hummer EV or that beat it to the first customer. I think Rivian beat them. I think Rivian won, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't matter to me. Who cares? <laughs> anyway, it was the first one we've tested. And um, it, it just, we had a lot of stuff to do with it. <laughs> and a week was not enough time. I mean, we, that thing worked for us from the time we picked it up. It basically, I think, never sat for more than four hours at a time. And that would have been like a long time of it sitting. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. I mean, especially the first, I guess the second full day we had it, it was towing trailers all day and then towing trailers all night. And then it took a break for like 30 minutes to charge. And then it was on the drag. Strip. Well, yeah, well, that was the thing we actually, so we, I sat at the charger cause I wanted to full charge it. I didn't have enough time to full charge it. Uh, speaking of which, if you go to a previous video on out of spec reviews, YouTube channel, um, actually right now is when we just posted the full charging analysis. And, uh, the point of this video is to, to wrap up our coverage with the Rivian. We've received a lot of questions. We actually wanted to do this with the truck, yeah. but ran out of time. Yeah, we returned the truck at two in the morning. Yeah. The idea would have been to re record and do a podcast in the truck, powered off the truck, but you know. Yeah, we, but you know, we, we just <laughs> Rivian said we need another week. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so maybe future we'll do stuff from that. But um, yeah, want to some of our thoughts. We got time in here, Kyle, myself, and uh, we do want to thank our sponsor, Magna. By the way. Say something about Magna. <laughs> uh, Magna makes a lot of parts for cars. They are powering uh, electric connected uh, and autonomous vehicles into the future. They're an, an insane uh, technology company when it comes to electric vehicles, but also combustion vehicles. I've driven their e-telligent force um, e-beam axle which was that electric uh, Silverado situation. Do you remember that? That's an incredible name. First of all. <laughs> I don't even know what I said. Yeah. I'm like three beers deep at this yeah. point. I'm just starting out too. Yeah, no, they do stuff. I mean, it's like they do things in all sorts of vehicles you've probably experienced. You've interacted with Magna stuff. And I think the coolest notice. thing they make is they make the battery enclosure for the Hummer and F-150 Lightning. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, but we can't talk about the F-150 Lightning one. But we can talk about the Hummer one. I'm actually going to the factory where they make that. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so yeah. that'll be pretty neat. Anyway, yeah, love the guys at Magna. Huge, huge thanks to them for sponsoring today's show. Yeah. So let's uh, start right off. Do you want to start with questions or end with questions? Well, I think we should talk about what we did with the Rivian first, uh, the R1T. So many things. So yeah. many things. But, <laughs> yeah. Well, let's at least uh, explain to our, our audience really quick uh, that may not know. We've been testing a Rivian R1T. We're yep. lucky to be one of the first outlets to get it and not only be one of the first outlets to get it, but to get it for an extended period of time. Uh, you know, most major outlets were getting it for four hours a day, two days. And they said, you know, we, we really pushed them hard. We said, look, we need two weeks yeah. and we got to road trip this thing and we got to do everything. And they said, we can't make two weeks happen. We'll get you a truck for a week. And I was like, that sounds awesome. <laughs> and it's so cool of them to give us a truck for that long. Yeah, we really appreciate it. And uh, we had it Wednesday to Wednesday. And it was kind of eight days because, well, because it was we, like yeah. early Wednesday <laughs> till Thursday yeah, morning. Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dropped it off at what, 3 a.m.? I don't know. Yes. <laughs> I mean, we, uh, we, I slept the whole way home, though. It was great. Thanks for driving yeah, time. It was passed out. Yeah. Both of you were. <laughs> Snoring. We were. We were trying to get the theoretical peak charging curve at 1 o'clock in the morning. And While was, I was asleep 
asleep the, in the were, passenger car. Yeah, yeah, he was asleep in the Volvo. We have an XC40 recharge, which we'll talk about on the full podcast. So make sure you head to Out of Spec Podcast YouTube channel. YouTube channel and every major podcast platform um, because we talk about everything we do there pretty much. We, we squeeze news in here and there, but it's still like we're doing so much with cars. It's a nice extra outlet to yeah do. you'll really get you know we it's just like us talking about what we've doing doing for the week what Behind we have the going scenes on. stuff yeah all sorts of stuff so but yeah we we did the charging test which is most recent on our mind because you spent all day editing that um, oh my goodness <laughs> that took forever just not not even because charging is hard it's just the computer editing is yeah, annoying yeah. to line all of need, our random footage up need a new computer but also <laughs> <laughs> we need a lot of new computers but now that we have m1 max coming in the laptop stuff and the imac and the new mac studio yep we're just going to get all new hardware yep so yeah, um, charging which we did the both the theoretical max and also just a normal here plug it in charging curve, which I think really could depend on the external ambient temperature and how hard you drove it on the way to the charger. Yeah, so it's really hard to do a zero to one hundred percent curve that's repeatable. Yeah, because the ambient temperatures need to be like you said consistent, and your starting temperatures need to be consistent. Anyway, I don't think we need to get so deep into the charging here. We saw a peak of 197 kilowatts. Mm -hmm. It delivered 120 three kilowatt hours to the battery pack. We were able to pull 124 out of it mm -hmm. in the range test. And basically the goal with the Rivian was to not really provide the best review, not to sh you know showcase filming quality. It was to answer all the questions that everyone had about the vehicle. It had yet not been in, like I, I say when, when a vehicle comes out, I don't really watch many reviews of stuff, but I'll watch Bjorn's videos, you yeah. know, and in, in Norway and Bjorn Nyland produces some great testing and we had the opportunity to get a vehicle before Bjorn did, yeah. which doesn't happen very often. And so we had to do all the stuff because no one knew that's Bjorn's thing. He gets the cars. He's in Europe first is why we're spending a lot more time in Europe these days. And, um, basically the, no one had evaluated a Rivian properly. And so here we are. Now we got it. We got all the data. And I think we did a good job. Yeah. So thank you guys for helping with yeah. all of that. I mean, I was gone for most of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you, was not the beginning few days. <laughs> yeah, the beginning few days were hectic. Yeah. That was intense. Yeah, we did uh, drag racing against ev almost everything. Uh, <laughs> yeah. With a capital EV. Yeah. Um, with uh, even a anything from a Plaid down to a, what's the slowest car there? The Smart? Yeah, yeah that's I the think fastest that, car there. I think won. we Actually, got... yeah, the Smart car won. But <laughs> <laughs> I think we got every EV currently on the market besides a Taycan. Yeah, what what was up with that? So we had a Taycan. We had like three different Taycans lined up, and then the dude with the turbo, Scott, who seems awesome, he has a GT3 RS too. He was Swim like, over. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. he's like, let let's come on over to the runway, and then he's like, oh, I had a meeting, so I couldn't make it. So come on, Scott. Have Scott. your meeting on the runway. Everyone wants to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we didn't have a Tycon. We intended to. Porsche has a Tycon here in Colorado, but it was just a, it was the white one. There was the white the base, base, which would four? not have one against anything. It was a four, yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and, and Porsche's like, beat that. yeah, I talked to Calvin, and Calvin's <laughs> like, look, if we're going to get you a car, and this was really short notice, he's like, we're going to get you a Turbo S for a drag race, just the way Porsche is. And I'm like, well, don't send the car out here for a three-second clip and a video that's competing against another truck so i'm like we'll find an owner and it didn't work but that's okay. next time we get a rivian we'll just uh fill in the gap so let's yeah. let's start by going through everything we did with the truck we yep. how did it even go first to thing we up? did we you went with picked me to it pick up, it up yeah, in the, the f-150 power boost love oh, that yeah, thing yeah, yeah. yeah so we drove down in the f-150 Power Boost Hybrid, yep. King Ranch. Nice. Oh. Massaging seats. Massaging seats. But I didn't find out till after I left for my ski trip that oh. I have massaging seats. Oh, really? Yeah. You know the Kia EV6 has massaging seats? Are you kidding? Yeah. <laughs> time would have been so bad. <laughs> yeah. You drove all the way to Granby? <laughs> yeah, Granby Ranch. Yeah. Uh, how, how, well, we'll get into the EV6 in a little bit. But but we took the Power Boost down to pick up the Rivian. Yeah, hung we're, out there, looked, talked yeah, to the Tanya crew there. And Bill, yeah. Um, and then drove it straight back to Fort Collins. You stopped the charge. I was like, I'm just going to the office. Right. I, I asked for Rivian to have it as dead as possible, which is probably the weirdest request. Hey, we're picking up an electric car. Can you please drain it? Right. Because what I would, what I really wanted to do on day one was DC fast charging test and 
a um, range test and here's what just arrived and do our whole you know initial video and, and sort of answer yeah so that's the first video it. we did was yeah, answering all of the forum questions before ask the questions before we got the truck yeah, that may not have been the best decision, but we have a whole bunch of questions <laughs> yeah. in this video that are for, from the forum guys. Mm -hmm. I have to say a big thank you to the Rivian forum group. They have a group on Facebook too, which I'm a member of. Yep. And big Rivian guy now? Big Rivian guy. <laughs> and you know, the thing is, uh, we've never really connected this deeply with the core audience of a vehicle that we've reviewed. Why? I don't know. We should do it more, but it really, I think, transformed our experience because it was able to say, hey, uh, we, we looked on the forums and we saw some people charging and stuff. We're like, okay, the, the, the groups are really trying to figure out how the truck charges. So it allowed me to know I need to show everything when it comes to charging. Yep. And, you know, we've already seen everyone else doing drag racing. So that was a lower priority for us. And so we did it, but it's still lower, not posted. It's a lower priority, but also, Kyle, get everything. <laughs> <laughs> Even a leaf. Jordan, so, so can we talk about how the, the drag racing thing came about? Because we were, we were sitting right over here, and we're like, what should we do with the Rivian this week? And then, I guess, I don't know, but I had an idea. Let's drag race it against the F-150 Power Boost. Which we never did. <laughs> Which yeah. we never ended up doing. <laughs> Instead, every EV on sale... And let's see what happens. That's, that's what my idea was. I said, let's get every electric car in the market. How hard can it be? And literally in four hours of just calling people we know, we had 80% of yeah. it. Yeah. That was pretty amazing. Yeah. Oh, we didn't have I-4 either, which we almost did. Well, that the was... I-4 arrived one day late. <sighs> yeah. Shame. See, we needed the Rivian for two weeks. Actually, it arrived the same day. So we shot the drag race on a Friday morning. Yeah. And didn't the I-4 get there Friday afternoon? Yeah, I think so. And BMW required, before it came to us, they put some miles and yeah, charged it twice. 250 miles. And two charging sessions. Mm. I guess they know we do charging tests. Yeah. <laughs> they want to make sure it works before we find out it doesn't. But we were like, who cares? Just have the guys who are putting the miles on it come run it in the drag strip. Anyway, it didn't work out. But we should have that car coming. It's a nice white M50. Mm, yeah. Mm. I've never seen one in person, so I'm excited to see how it is. Mm, we drove it. like it a lot. Does it have the big grill in the front? Yep. Nah, no, never it's, mind. It's, it's better than the iX, though. It's better than the iX. Well, yeah. no. Uh, but like it has the big grill. Four series. Yeah, it just grill. looks like a four series. Yeah, it's subdued. I was shocked. Like, we went to Vegas, and I was like, look at all these four series, and then there's the electric iX. And Kyle's like, no, they're all electric. And I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Um, okay, so so we did uh, every, day one was get the car low. We did the whole brought the Rivian up here, did all the stuff. Really enjoyed the first day with it though. That's when we because it was it a relaxed day. It was a relaxed day. <laughs> and we got to play around with it. Like we found out how good the sound system was. I right. don't think I realized how good that that was. Meridian tw twenty one twenty two speaker sound system. Super good. It's yeah. stellar. It's one of the best systems almost in any, by far any truck, but in almost yeah, any car. Yeah, I'm going to say top, top three, top four of that any, I've heard. any car. Yeah. Yep. Um, fantastic. So you, and you kind of figured out the UI and everything. Cause we played with it a bit in Sonoma and California um, back in At the November, first mile. Thing. First mile event. Which, which remember was, how kind of cool that was that we got to get a video out before most people on the yeah. truck. Yeah, that was a great video, but you know, it was like within their parameters. Of right, course, they, we got to you know, drift around a well, little bit. Well, <laughs> off camera, the, once the camera was off, I'm like, all right, I don't really care anymore. So then we just started drifting yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's, uh, I mean, the more time we spent with it, the more I think you realized, I mean, I think I already knew, but it's just the vehicle that does everything. Yeah, I've, I guess I've been reluctant to fall in love with the Rivian. You were hesitant because on paper it's so good and you're like, it can't be that good because then you'll be like heartbroken. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I don't really know the reason. <laughs> <laughs> I think you think more deeply than I do. Oh, yeah. I guess <laughs> so I was just philosophical like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, I mean, the Rivian seems pretty cool, but like. I want a golf R. I don't know. And I am getting one, obviously. But, like, you know, I just I, it's not, I just wasn't front of mind for a yeah. lot of things. And after spending the week with it, it's very impressive. So day one, uh, went to did the charging test uh, down in Denver, full zero to 100, and was left very confused because the vehicle had slowed down charging due to thermals. And I was like, I know I drove this thing. You know, I, I hope I didn't drive it too hard, but it actually wasn't overheating it was too cold to get a good charging session. And it doesn't precondition? No preconditioning. Okay. So it needs preconditioning. Yeah. Everything um, does, yeah. Everything needs battery preconditioning. And even on a, on a large package, so like maybe Hummer EV won't 
Mm. I don't know. We'll see. It, it just depends. Um, so much thermal mat. It would have to precondition for hours. <laughs> <laughs> so, so actually, uh, Hummer EV does have preconditioning and oh. it's, and it's manual. And we had been driving this thing in the heat all day and I had hit manual preconditioning on the way to a charger and it had not even completed by the time I got there. And it was in Phoenix. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Jesus. So good luck. I don't, re- we'll have to play around with that. That's going to be another full week when yeah. we get that vehicle. So um, th- Thursday, what all happened? I mean, the, I guess trailer stuff. Yeah. That's yeah, when we, we got did the towing. big box trailer. Yeah. We first went to go to U-Haul. No trailers available. Right. And then we went to D&E. Yeah. yeah. Great guys there. They just like, yeah, sure. Take a day. Early. Yeah. So that we found this trailer sales place here in Fort Collins. I've been emailing with them a bit because I, I'm in the market for a car hauler. I want to get, you know, an enclosed trailer that we can you know, put, put a Morgan in eventually one day yes. and, you or, know. or multiple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I was like, well, we need an out of spec standard trailer to compare, you know, you know, TFL does the, I think some of the best towing tests in the world with the Ike. And so definitely don't want to, you know, that's their thing. Yeah. And we happen to be in the same area, but what I think we can do at least is do a really good job of explaining efficiencies and tests in our test loop, which is arguably not as cool, but we go from Wellington to Cheyenne and We're back call to it the Wellington. pike. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Box trailer. We shoved a model three in it. Um, yep. Towed it. It was like what, seventy five hundred pounds? Seventy four. Seventy four hundred pounds in total. But then there had like the spare tire in the Tesla. Seventy five hundred pounds. Yeah, makes no difference. Yep. Uh, and yeah, towed that and towed. Made... Uh, we towed the F one fifty first. Oh, F one fifty towed that stuff first, and then we compared that. We towed the used the Rivian to tow the same package. Right, and so we looked at the costs between the two and the towing performance between the two. Were you surprised? The cost about the same. Yeah. And it depends on fuel prices. Yet you get 100 miles on a Rivian and 200, 250 on a F-150. So it costs the same unless you're doing a short tow, in which case you could charge at home for your home kilowatt hour price. Right. So, (laughs) So in that video, we haven't edited it at this point. But we will probably give the pricing based on different fuel types as well as different home electricity types. And I'm sure in in some cases fuel will be more expensive and in some cases electric could be more expensive. But we'll have to crunch the numbers. But either way, I mean, it was like a couple dollar difference from what we actually paid at the, yeah. that particular fueling pump and that particular charging station. And then you have the inconvenience of dealing with charging stations and trailering. I mean, yeah. we were in an open parking lot and it was the biggest pain. And in you the took ass. up six spots. <laughs> I, think, I think six parking spots to charge but one only truck. one. You only blocked or you didn't block any chargers. Right. It's just impossible to do it anywhere else. Like, I should have just blocked all the chargers just for the thumbnail. Yeah. Block, that, <laughs> block the leaf that was there. Yeah. <laughs> Plug in the far oh left my charger. Goodness, we were backing this truck up, right, in this little space. And there's this little old lady in her Nissan Leaf charging, and she just wants no part of this. Yeah, she <laughs> didn't look up once. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Poor, nah, that's, that's sad. But yeah. uh, anyway, I mean, I, I think the, the towing performance of the Rivian was stellar. I mean, we had a massive headwind for a portion of it. No overheating issues whatsoever. Um, those, those Bosch motors, those four little motors, those things rip. Yeah. And it really shows when you put some weight on the back of this truck. Now, now max towing capability is 11,000 pounds and we put, you know, 7,500. So we weren't near max, but the F-150 technically can tow 12,000 pounds. Yeah, I think it was 12, seven, but towed that 7,500 pounds way worse than the Rivian. It was squishy. It mm-hmm. was in boost the whole time. It was hunting for gears on the 10 speed. Cause I wanted to keep it at 70 miles an hour and it go, and the Rivian just like sat there dead straight. Yeah. And I was just so a little bit, we may not have had it loaded totally correctly or our cargo totally strapped down. If we're honest, uh, <laughs> allegedly, <laughs> allegedly Nears makes no difference. <laughs> There's a lot of shirt team to make. <laughs> yeah, Nears makes no difference. <laughs> I was just like, no hard breaks yeah. are going to happen here. And you know, it was definitely not like we, if we're going to do more towing testing, we need to do be a lot more legit about it. But I think it was a great indication For the basis of what we did. It, perfect indication of how different the two handled and price wise yeah and the rivian just smoked the f-150 in driving feel yeah because yeah, even like leaving fort collins to go south you hit this rumble strip basically on i-25 
and it was miserable in the F-150. I was <laughs> bouncing up you, and you down. You start to do the tundra twerk. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but then I did it with the Rivian. It was fine. It was just like you could feel the bumps were there, but it's not as jarring as the F-150. Yeah, the be. Rivian's got magical suspension. And it is a smaller truck than the F-150. You can't really compare them. But, but even with the Ranger or a Tacoma, it feels yeah. kind of this bounciness yeah, that you're getting Trucks always there. ride the same way, and the Rivian does not have any of that. And part of that is because the battery packs a structural component. It. Right. And it's designed by McLaren. Well, the suspension <laughs> it's are designed by ex McLaren engineers, but close enough. <laughs> it's based on McLaren 720 on yeah, a lift. Time in, It's a 720. <laughs> yep. I'll buy it right now. <laughs> uh, then we towed two more trailers. Well, no, one more trailer, two different ways. Yeah. Um, first, loaded down with sand. <laughs> so, what was. <laughs> This was brutal because we were we got the trailer and then we're like we got to find stuff to put on this thing, but it, it has to be really heavy and have a very low profile. You guys should have been there. This is problem solving in the moment. <laughs> we're calling Home Depots like minutes before they close. Hey, do y'all have sand or no, we bricks? We're looking for cinder blocks. Cinder blocks. <laughs> and then They're we like, get there and what? then the cinder blocks are like half cut. He's like, yeah, these are all gonna weigh the same. Yeah, because they were they were some of them were shaved, and I'm like, this isn't gonna be accurate, and we don't have a good scale. The sand was brilliant, though. It, it was. It just sat there. We strapped it down, but we probably didn't need to. Honestly, it was like on there. Well, yeah. We saved an hour. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And Tyler, you were using the Rivian flashlight to strap it down. Oh yeah. I tried to use Big the lantern. flashlight guy. <laughs> I tried to use the lantern. Didn't help at all. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong use for the lantern. Yeah. Uh, I should have thrown some music on them. But the the yeah the flashlight in the door the Rolls Royce. It worked so well. <laughs> I was surprised how bright it actually thousand was lumens. thousand yeah. lumens yeah i was like uh 500 we'll get a little dim light to where you could put in a tent post or something like that mm -hmm. but no it actually worked this really well brighter than the sun yeah if we had more time would have done a, a range test on the flashlight to see <laughs> right. how long it keeps that lumens uh <laughs> <laughs> see the, these are the videos i wanted to make was to yeah. test the subcomponents of the truck and do all the weird things at least i got to test the speaker so i did i also did that thursday did a full review on the speaker and it was good the camp speaker the camp speaker for our, our audience audience who might be listening can you explain what yeah that is? so in the center console if you get the launch edition or opt for the adventure pack you get this speaker that pulls out of below the center console like you literally wouldn't even know it was there uh as long as it's in park and stopped you can pull the speaker out and then pair it to your phone it's regular bluetooth speaker but it's not exactly regular because you can turn the light on <laughs> there's there's like <laughs> reflective parts at the bottom and that's where the light kind of illuminates it's out a from. very dim warm light yeah it's meant to be like you're in the woods literally no lights maybe not even moonlight and this lamp would just like you know it would let you know roughly where things are it's it's meant to like roughly not like direction basically yeah <laughs> it's meant to not interfere with, interfere with the actual experience of camping of course, then you could pull the light out of the door. And, just like, hey. <laughs> and, and the music goes really freaking loud, too. The music is great. So, yeah, actually, one of the comments on the video pointed out, hey, this might sound different outdoors. Because I did the review inside the Rivian, kind of comparing it to the Rivian sound system, which obviously the Rivian's built-in Meridian one is better. But the Bluetooth speaker is good. In-house design, partnership with Timfany for the components. Solid speaker. But, but, then but I learned I, in your review it only has two tweeters, where the Apple speaker has eight. Yeah, no, one tweeter. So oh, yeah, sorry. That, I think I that didn't was, learn apparently. I, <laughs> yeah. I ripped apart their choice of speaker a little bit because yeah, I you know the HomePod is what I compare a lot of things to, and the you HomePod, should have had the HomePod there. Yeah, yeah. I, next time I get the Rivian, I'm doing like I'm getting like twelve speakers. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome uh, to out of spec speaker reviews. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, the HomePod has seven tweeters and a and a woofer, and this has one woofer, two mid drivers, and one tweeter. Uh, which explains why the mids were definitely full and the highs were just a bit lacking. But when we took it outside, it actually sounded good as you cranked it up. The bass was amazing. Yeah, which so blew my mind, honestly. I had low expectations because they could have gotten away with just buying a cheap speaker and throwing it in there because who's going to complain you're camping? <laughs> but they actually did good job. So good speaker. Everything about the Rivian seems to be really well holistically thought of even the little chirp when you lock it that's amazing that's like uh, that's it's just, a bit much for me i, I love the bird <laughs> it's chirp. Like, yeah you want to be out in nature but like who's actually yeah but who's why like, would you want yeah have you ever locked an id no, forward and like, it goes eh, 
okay, in the future. Bing bong. <laughs> yeah, that would be funny. In that the, would be funny. In the future, custom sounds, or 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 if that's like not legal because of all the things Tesla run to, custom bird chirps, like pick your bird. Oh, you could choose a family of yeah. birds. And actually, someone on on one of the forum posts mentioned a great idea of like like region specific. It's a different unlock sound. Oh. So to get all the unlock sounds, you'd have to travel to all different regions. I love the idea of unlocking things by moving yeah. with the vehicle. So charging unlocks, like with Rivian Adventure Network, for each Rivian Adventure Network charger you get, you get a little badge in your software. Pokemon Go expanded. <laughs> yeah. So I don't actually get that reference, but <laughs> I'm sorry. This guy. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, and then you did your road trip. Well, I think we did more stuff. We did Drag Race. Drag yeah, Drag Race. Morning, yeah. That was only car that beat it was the, the Plaid, Plaid and, and the, the Smart. Smart. But we knew the Smart was going to win. Yeah. yeah. The no Plaid brainer. was a surprise. <laughs> and people may not know, we have an electric Smart car that's just a freaking Tank. mega rocket yeah. ship. Like, you can't keep... Seen more rally courses than an actual rally car. That's actually true. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Um, and it's held together. Like, well, this thing's been in the air. Yeah, skid plate's I, coming loose a little I bit. I think the battery is the new skid plate. Oh. <laughs> I think the most exciting race was actually the Drew's Model 3 performance. Wow, yeah. That was neck and neck. Neck that, and neck. Like, picture-perfect start and finish. It was, it was good. Just insanely good. Yeah. And then I did the range test. Yep, that's right. Did I? I think I slept for a bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We all sent you to bed because you didn't sleep the night before the uh, drag race. Yeah. And then Drew comes back to the house with us. He's like, yeah, he's delusional. He just walked <laughs> off and went to bed. <laughs> but then, then, yeah, so did the range test on Saturday. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I it was after I left. Yeah, yeah so Friday I, was too windy, so you did the range test Saturday. Oh, that's right. Friday yeah. was too windy. And it was pretty windy on Saturday, too, yeah. but at least it was a direct head, head tail, and tail wind. So it canceled, canceled yeah, out more it or less. Yeah, cancels most. Yeah, yeah, more or less cancels. It was not the perfect and condition. it was good. Almost 300 miles. Holy smokes. That that's, thing doesn't And it's stop. small battery, right? M- middle, middle battery. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's so impressive. So I'm, I'm really curious what the small battery is going to do, actually. We'll 200? Yeah. Do you I think, think Rivian's going to loan out a small battery truck? No. If we ask them. I don't know. I don't think they will have any of their media fleet. I can't wait to experience the big battery. Yeah, yeah. that's going to oh, be insane. You can do that range test. I don't, that takes I, too much time. And yeah, I'll do it. We'll just do the Colorado backcountry road. Yeah. See how far we can go down. So these are the things I wanted to do with this truck was to do the backcountry road. The, when we were brainstorming what we wanted to do with it, that, that definitely that's, came it's, up. We started to realize, oh, wait, there's only 24 hours in a day. we right. got to cut some stuff but out. But that really got in the way. We yeah. really need to expand this day time frame. Because the backcountry route is a pretty slim simplistic route it's mostly gravel and then you get kind of towards like steamboat area that's when you get some obstacles what is it what's the dude's name who took the zeros from us and did it uh tucker tucker mm. i can't remember he, electric cycle rider something like that Gr- great uh, that, video i know that's though. a channel it may not be his but yeah <laughs> it's a great video great video yeah. he took the zero so we took two zeros across montana without charging and guess what that video is still not posted yeah or ever <laughs> no we'll get it up eventually it's the best thing we've ever done we have to post it, it was the crate we were knocking on people's doors in rv parks trying to charge yeah, it was a little sketchy. It was, it was great. Yeah. <laughs> we met people that had never heard of like the internet. They're like, oh, yeah. I went to the town in Great Falls to my get my... My grandson usually does this stuff for me. <laughs> yeah, <it's> like, <laughs> what's Google? <laughs> they so, had... Do you have a 240 volt? Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> and they actually did. Oh, great. Yeah, because of RVs. And uh, yeah, um, yeah. I just love that he had... We, we, we were talking to him about the virus. He's like, what, what virus are you talking about? Hey, he's like, yeah, not that many people come here with their RVs anymore. I think it's because the internet's down or something. <laughs> <laughs> all of this is recorded, and it's all amazing. Oh, yeah. And so we really need to share. And, and the people of Montana were awesome. Yes, yeah, so nice. We, yep. we saw some, the, some of the most beautiful views after driving in fields yeah, for so, three so days. The first, it was six days, wasn't it? Yeah, two-thirds of the trip was just straight road, two inches behind the support vehicle <laughs> to get a, most range. A Ford Transit uh, that we rented, and yeah, basically an inch off the bumper to get range on the zeros for days. Yeah, it was miserable. But after that, it was... Amazing. Once Glacier was amazing. I need to get up to Glacier ASAP. Yeah, we have the we have the spot in Glacier to camp. Sweet. 
It is, re- it is really the spot. Yeah, no, uh, no, I won't take the Miata. You need some ground clearance. We got the uh, transit down there, though. Yeah, and full <laughs> throttle up. <laughs> yeah, getting it up was like, once we got down there, we're like, uh, so we are really sorry to the folks at Hertz because uh, this is going to hurt. Yeah. Yep. What were we talking about with the Rivian? How did we so talk we, about... We did, we did the, the backcountry. Oh, yeah. So anyway, there was so much we wanted to do with it. So let's talk about what we did do with it. Yeah. Range test Saturday. And then that's when you left for Moab was that night. Or was it no, Sunday? No. Yeah. I left right after the night. range test. But I feel you, like I must have done something Friday. I think you slept for the most of the huh. day. Anyway. Um, slept in editing, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> but and the, then, yeah. So did the range test. That was a really impressive... Uh, took a while test. too yeah well i woke up and i checked the weather i'm like it's go time we gotta do this thing. <laughs> <laughs> starbucks charger go <laughs> yes and then live streamed it too yeah which was really fun i'm enjoying these live streams yeah. they make the time go by um and hopefully you guys will do them too at some point yeah so that'd be cool uh yep yeah, range test and then i left to go on the trip to you went to phoenix. moab and then phoenix right well I, I went to grand junction oh yeah yeah so I made it from basically our house to the Colorado Mills Mall, which is right before the hill climb on I-70, and I charged it to 99% because all of the Rivian guys, all of them, when I said I wasn't going to go over the mountain pass, I was like, I'll go down to Albuquerque and over. They're like, no, 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 no. you got to see what the thing does in the mountains. So I said, all right. And so I full charged it and I logged the percentage, the energy used, and how many miles we had driven in all the major towns you would stop at. So I did Frisco, Vail, uh, et cetera, et cetera, the whole way out to Grand Junction. And that's all in the out of spec motoring video because like a disproportionate amount of Rivian owners live in Colorado. Yeah. A lot of local. Yeah, Jordan saw his first one today, customer vehicle. I've seen a few in Denver, but I saw my first one in Fort Collins. Just, Mm -hmm. yeah, right out here by the office. Uh, Green, launch green. green. Yep. Uh, Yeah. So you made it to Grand Junction. At like four in the morning yep. or three in the morning. I plugged into a 6.6 kilowatt charger. Ooh. I got like 15% charge overnight. Wow. It's hotel charging needs at least improvements. <laughs> I mean, you just need 80 amp hotel charging. I'm fine with 80 amp split to 40 if it's load shared, Yeah, but we need to, and these charge point units, they're really screwing over companies in my opinion. Nothing against ChargePoint. They usually work and they're nicely connected. But ChargePoint will sell you like this package. Like you can spend $7,000 on two 6.6 kilowatt ports. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, you can manage everything on the back end and charge people. And like that sounds good on the face of things. Or you could just put in two NEMA 1450s, have a little $5 thing at the front of the hotel or 10 bucks, whatever it is. You'll get 40 amps at better voltage. Well, same voltage, but higher amperage. And you would save yourself the 70 7200 bucks to put these things in, whatever they cost. Yeah. And they're so slow. Yeah. So that was pretty frustrating. And then I posted it online. Everyone's like, well, it's not the hotel's responsibility to charge <laughs> your car. And I guess they're right. But they're like, if you want to full charge, arrive earlier. I'm like, I'm not going to let the truck sit for 26 hours to full charge. Yeah. Uh, and then where'd you go next? Then... Uh, everyone was like, well, that's enough range to get you to DC fast charger. But I'm like, I need a hundred percent charge. Cause I'm going over the La Salle's to Moab. So I went to the grand junction, electrify America charger, deep charged it, went the basically across to Moab and got almost there before I pretty much got stuck. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had to turn around because the, the, it was pretty muddy it was a gnarly trail like i'm on in the middle of the woods no one else is out there by myself in the rivian just like seeing a mud puddle being like i better hit this with some speed because there's no way out and hammered (laughs) it you also forgot all the recovery gear yeah i did not bring anything it was probably not the smartest (laughs) we would i don't know how we would get that thing out. here's how planned out it was at 8 p.m., Kyle said, do you want to go to Moab? And I was like, that sounds fun. He's like, I'm on my way to Moab. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so, but that's how, that's how I normally operate is uh-huh. in real time. And so, yeah, basically had to turn around almost to Moab, go back to the Grand Junction charger. Wasted pretty much half a day. Yep. Then I charged up, went to Moab to the charger. A bolt was sitting there. 
of course, taking the only DC. You could have towed that out. I know. I was like, I'm just going to push this guy away. Cause he was at like 90%. I'm like, where are you trying to go in this thing? <laughs> <laughs> trying to set it on fire. Anyway, you know, if it was full charge, I would have been really upset, but he was taking juice and it's a bolt. And maybe he was trying to get back to Colorado or something. So whatever, it all works. But one DC fast charger does not cut it in, a, good, in yeah. a metropolitan area. Um, and it's not a major metropolitan area. Yeah, but, I wouldn't say it's really that big. Yeah, but but Moab's like the mecca of off roading. Yeah, and people with, go there. Yeah, but it's yeah. just recently that we're seeing electrified oh, off roaders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's so fair. I don't think it really is on their biggest concern. As so I was really should not have done anything there, but I did a, not even full trails. I just like went down a couple, did some things, just did baby lines back, aired back up, and then I was like, it's getting dark, and I need to be in Phoenix. And, <laughs> yep. and you know, I, I was driving the Hummer EV first thing the next morning. And so I had already skipped all of the Hummer programs that day so that I could basically road trip the Rivian down there and squeeze everything else we needed to in. Uh, but my plan was to get there for dinner at 6 PM. Anyway, I got there at like three thirty four. I think actually four thirty in the morning, yep. took a quick cat nap. It was something late and, uh, <laughs> yeah, then drove the Hummer all day and the Rivian sat that day. Yeah. So it didn't do anything with it. Nice break. It probably needed that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it just needed to think about life. It sounded like 20% state of charge. There were chargers there, but of course the Hummers were hogging them the whole time. Yeah. And I wasn't, I did not want to get the Rivian in the way of the Hummer EV program. Mm -hmm. What I didn't want to do was like, like friends that I know there, I'm like, Hey, I'll show you the truck or whatever. But, um, you know, you didn't want to steal the show. I you didn't, didn't want, want to, to be that guy. I didn't want to be that guy <laughs> at the Hummer event being like, I got a Rivian before all of you. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, just like, just, I didn't want to hijack the Hummer EV program and I didn't want the Hummer people getting annoyed that. So I parked it like way in the far back of the parking lot as far as I could. And yeah, just, just did, did my own thing. I parked them next to each other. I filmed a little side by side for the Hummer review and, um, we, I assume this will go up before that. So we can't really talk about the Hummer. Yeah. But then I drove home and when I drove home, I left at, I think seven 30 in the morning, something like that. The following day after drinking way too much the <laughs> night before. And, <laughs> uh, and that was an interesting test because I had to cover distance almost a thousand miles mm -hmm. almost. Um, in one day I had to hammer it home because we had stuff to do here and you live streamed it all. It's pretty much all live streamed yep. and made it home and had zero charging issues. Can you imagine that? That's great. I've never had a CCS road trip with literally zero problems on both charge point CPE two fifties and, uh, all ABB electrify America units. Those were the two units I used. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, on my EV six trip, Ultra America gave us zero issues other than a, a billing issue. Like we got double charged, but it never didn't charge the vehicle. And that's number one priority money. Yeah. You know, the cost stuff can be figured out later. Yeah, money doesn't matter, but yeah. you gotta get somewhere. Um, Francis was a different story, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> there goes Electri our, our Francis energy sponsorship. Electrify America was solid. So yeah, I didn't even have to use electrify America for my trip. Really? Yeah. I just used the come and go charge point. Oh, the CPE two fifties. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. No issues there either. Just plugged right in, started doing some work, sat there for 20, 30 minutes. So. And they're not even that fast of chargers. No. I. Well, that one got 100. I saw 122 kilowatts. You saw 122 kilowatts on a CPE2. I was the, also the only one there. Yeah, but it doesn't affect the station really. Yeah, it just everyone was looking at me funny. Some yeah. dude comes up to me. He's like, hey, man, how much range you get out of that thing? I was like, ah, 200-ish. How much does it cost to fill up? I said, eh. From like 20% or 10% to 80 was like 17 bucks the other day. He's like, nah, okay. Have a good day. <laughs> and, his, and his super duty just <laughs> rolls coal when he's leaving. I was like, oh, yeah. my guy. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, we, we need to talk about your first solo EV road trip. Yeah, it was fun. No issues. I think it helped that I stopped and charged at Jordan's house the night so before. So do you know the spec of the car you used? It was a wind. All-wheel drive. Yep. EV6. Yep. Made by Kia. Yeah. Is that who makes it? No. <laughs> Some people may not know. Yeah, yeah. Timon took an EV6 wind. So I took an EV6 wind from Chicago to Dallas. Timon took an EV6 wind into the mountains for a ski trip. And I took an EV6 GT line from Munich to Stuttgart. Ooh. Wow. This guy. This guy. Yeah. <laughs> We're all big EV6 guys over here. Yeah, but I I'm actually did We've really enjoy it. EV6 experience now. Timon liked it more than he expected, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I was really just like, this is kind of ugly. 
and then I started spending time with it. I was like, you can lower it, throw some wheels on it, put a roof box on top. You got the real sport back look <laughs> or the shooting brake look. Have you mocked that up yet? What it look like? Oh, I still got to do that. Okay. My Photoshop is just taking a dump on me. Yeah. Um, PC problems. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, back. <laughs> I really, really enjoyed that car. It was comfortable. Good sound system for the most part. It really is only good when you plug in your phone because over Bluetooth, it's kind of quiet. Yeah. Hmm. Um, it's quiet plugged in with Android Auto too, actually. Yeah. Yeah, but you had you, Android Auto experience. Yep. You have an Android? No, am I fired? Me, me and Ahmad, <laughs> his and so I, he's got the folding Android phone. Yeah, yeah. I asked Ahmad for all of his complaints about the infotainment. They were all Android Auto. By <laughs> <laughs> CarPlay, if CarPlay's full screen. Yeah, Android Auto's not. <laughs> anyway, well, yeah. you know, a lot of people ask because we really want to keep this Rivian focused. A yep. lot of people ask, why does Rivian not have CarPlay? That's one of these questions right here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Should we just get in? Well, let's finish up what we did. I drove really it home, again. and then what else did we do with it? We. Oh, I did. You got home Wednesday review. morning. Snow driving. Or Tuesday night. Driving. I did snow driving earlier. We forgot that one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I came back Wednesday afternoon, and then we went to Denver to do a charging test. And then returned it. Returned it at Very two late. in the morning. Yeah, uh, they basically said bring it back Wednesday, and I said, okay, what time? And, and they're like, what time do you want to bring the vehicle back? I said, what's the <laughs> latest possible time? And they said, well, there's a security guard. You just put the key in the Dropbox. So to me, that was a Thursday morning. Yeah, right. Yeah. Just right so before service need, crew shows up. Yeah, you don't need it till you guys show up Thursday morning. So, right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. we squeaked out every last drop with it. Yep. But and I think we did a good job getting most content out. And a lot of you have asked us questions because during one of the live streams, so many Rivian owners were watching. I mentioned, hey, put a, a thread on the forum that says, you know, we've now done thirty two hundred miles with it. We've all driven the truck. Yeah. What and and like what do you want to know about it now that we've had real experience with it? Yeah. So I'm gonna go through some questions. Timon's got some in front of him too, and then I want to end at the very end with our just final thoughts on cool. the truck. But that sounds good. Um, yeah. So I want to, and we'll just rapid fire because there's a lot of questions, and we don't want to take. And we're forever. in no rush. Uh, okay. Then yeah. yeah. Okay. Keep, wait, make it two hours. Who <laughs> yeah. cares? We're drinking. Another, another <laughs> drink. yeah. uh, so first question: How do you think the interior will hold up against pets? And how hard slash easy is it to clean like pet hair as a dog person? Please answer. <laughs> Alyssa made the video on the dog stuff. Oh, I don't know if right. she went into the cleaning aspect of it, but it is a sort of, you know, not real leather and it can just be wiped up. So yeah. I know blue left some paw prints and we wiped those up or she wiped them up and didn't, didn't seem to say anything different than what she's experienced with the Tesla, which has been unbelievably great for dogs. Uh, we have the white seats, and we've thrown the muddy dogs in there since day one and 100,000 miles. They're yeah, great. they could use another clean. They just need a wipe down. <laughs> yeah. Cleans right up. Yeah. Yeah, I'll borrow the Tesla again and detail it. Yeah, There's that would be great. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Can yeah. Can you get, take it to get registered, too? Because I don't want to go to the DMV. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what are your thoughts on the fancy floor mats that come with the adventure package? Don't like them. He didn't like them. I liked them. Didn't they even, kept coming did, up on me. I didn't even notice that they were fancy Simon floor mats. Didn't even know they were floor mats. <laughs> it must be the way that I sit when I drive, but they kept bunching up. Yeah. They, yeah, they didn't stay in place well, but I love how they looked and felt. Yeah. So Okay. I I'll, just thought they looked out of place. Yeah. How hard is it to get stuff in and out of the trunk? <laughs> it depends if you're 5'2 or not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I think what they're getting at is the... F-150 Lightning Mega Power Frunk. And has, Silverado. Has that and thing Silverado that's... have the... Op the grill goes up with the frunk, so you and have the Hummer easy EV. access. And the Hummer, yeah. The, is the Rivian the only one that does not have... Truck-wise, so far. Wow. But the Rivian's also not... Like, picture trying to get into the frunk of a, of a Hummer EV over the front. Why would I want... Are they asking how hard it is for them to get themselves into it? It no, says stuff. 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 Not, okay. In and out. You, but like, if, if the grills didn't go up with all those other trucks, that would be a crazy reach. Why is it not crazy in the Rivian? It's still a bit of a reach, but the okay. Rivian's not quite as tall, I don't think. Well, it's adjustable. Yeah. yeah. Slam it's it. It's super easy to get stuff in and out. Slam there it. Go. Yeah, getting it. <laughs> I would say didn't even think that that was an issue. issue. Yeah. And if you can't put it in there, maybe just, you should just drive like a Prius or something. Yeah. It's lower to the ground. <laughs> not, not, nothing derogatory against <laughs> Prius drivers. I'm just saying, you know, you could get something lower. Yeah. Uh, and then what's like the startup sequence of the lights look like? They just mm. turn on. No. Do they do the fade? Thing? Yeah. Yeah. They fade right. from the center 
out. Excuse me. Sorry for that. <laughs> they made from That's right. The yeah. Center out. I really dig it. And has Rivian mentioned anything about V2L charging? Mm. That has come up a couple times. Yeah. Not with Rivian. Okay. But they, it has V2L from 120 volt outlets. Mm-hmm. That's right. And we didn't really, so there was so many things I wanted to test like e-bikes in there and do gear guard stuff. And we just yeah. haven't, but our friend Robert got, is getting his on Monday. So we'll do stuff yeah, with his We have truck. a lot more we'll do. So, yeah. uh, I want to max out the power outlets and see what it does to shut off. We did this with Ionic five. Zach took an Ionic five and maxed out its power output. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just shut off. It just said overloaded, but it provided way more power than what it said it would do Yeah. before it shut off. So I'm really curious what we can pull out of the Rivian. Yeah. Uh, Timon, you have any more questions? I mean, there's a lot. I'll just, I'll yeah, just run through, through all of them. I'll Even share, if they're yeah. duplicates, that's fine. Because yeah. I think it's also interesting for other people to know what, what we get asked. When do of. you plan on getting one? Well, I would buy one today, right now, if there was the, the spec available. But there's not. You just can't. And I really want... I'm, I'm flexible in exterior color, pretty much. But I don't think I'm flexible in interior color. Uh, first off, can't do silver. What about that new gray? That's fine, but that silver is just a no-go. Really? Yeah. Why? Looks like a rental car? Yeah, it's just so base. It just okay. makes the car look so base. When I, don't, it's just, I don't disagree. <laughs> I'm, I'm starting to like a lot of cars in silver, but something about the Rivian in silver. Like a Model 3 looks great in silver. Agreed. Best color in a Model 3. But on a Rivian, it's no. But a Model 3 already looks kind of like a base car. <laughs> True. <laughs> uh, Size-wise, how does it compare between like a Ranger and an F-150? Well, I think this has been answered a million times. I think it's it? closer it's right to... right in the middle. But closer to Ranger. Yep. Yeah. Yep. We parked it next to a Colorado, and it was just slightly bigger than the Colorado. Right. David's car. Would you pick it over a Hummer? I don't think the Hummer review is out. I don't think the Hummer embargo has lifted yet. So I think that would give away in, an impression of the Hummer, which I'm not allowed to say. Mm. I'm allowed to say I would pick a Rivian. <laughs> yeah, me too. Wait, say that one more time. I'm allowed to say that I would pick a Rivian, but that's because I just don't know about the Hummer. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Timon? Yeah, I would take a Rivian over. I don't need Not the any. size and of... And why would you guys do that? I don't need the size of a Hummer EV. I'm a small car person. Yeah, he drives so I, a Miata. <laughs> I think it's funny. Like I mean, We talked about this before, but like I, lo- I think the Tesla charging network and just Tesla as a whole is great. But... At the same time, my dream garage. Get this bad boy out of here. My yeah, dr- this my guy. Dream garage, <laughs> I didn't check and see if I was wearing my Tesla shirt. My dream garage does not have a Tesla. It'd be a Taycan and a Rivian, which are CCS cars. That's a fantastic two car solution. Absolutely. We got the long, long, no, Forest Green, Ocean Coast, Rivian, and the Taycan, Sport Turismo, GTS. I'd probably just do red. You do oh. Carmine Red like every basic GTS yep. owner. Yeah. <laughs> Taycan, GTS, GT3 RS. Lexus GX470. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a He's whole already on his way. Too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're already on one step. <laughs> uh, let's see what else is in here. We're looking for. We just read every single one. It's okay. How does it do against Model Three performance or refresh Model S long range in a zero to sixty, and then sixty to one hundred and six or sixty to one thirty? Okay, Rivian well the Rivian do can't do one thirty. It goes one sixteen indicated, which is about one twelve. GPS. Um, it's it's faster than a Model Three performance. That's I was blown away by that. I was not expecting. It was dead even to about sixty sixty five, and then I just pulled away in the Rivian like Drew was hitting the brakes in the Model Three, and we ran it twice. Yeah, pretty insane. Um, how did this is a good one? How does your back and booty feel after the longest drive? So road trip comfort. Mm, great. No issues. Great. Mm-hmm. Very comfortable seating position. Nice cabin. Uh, needs tinted front windows and a windshield. Very much needs a tinted front windshield. Yeah. And they asked how access to the roof would be without stepping on the gear tunnel door. And that's because this person's thinking about an R1S mm-hmm. and getting to the roof. Is you open the, the as literally any SUV. Open the door and step on either a seat yeah. or the side panel. That's probably the best way. Yep. <laughs> I mean, I or stand on your like, tire. Go, go try and get on the roof of a Tahoe. It'd be the same. Wouldn't yeah, you time in? Yeah, probably. Uh, summary of drive modes. Yeah, we can get into the drive specific modes. Specific driving situations. Yeah. 
I mean, so there's all purpose, which is, and this is all coming from memory, but I yeah. think I've got it down. There's all purpose, which is the, the way that the vehicle start up and it's very comfortable, especially if the suspension is standard and the damper set to soft. Mm -hmm. Then there's a regen selection, high or low. I only drove it in high for them. I mean, I put it in, in standard and, and ex showed what that was like. And then there's three levels of traction control. I don't think you can back off traction control in all purpose mode. I think you need to be in a separate drive mode to disable stability control. And traction control stays on the whole time, so stability control. Then there's sport, which is lowers it down one notch as standard. The damper control changes uh, even with soft and harsh, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, then you can put your re your stability down to reduced, which I prefer. Uh, I don't know if we should recommend others doing that, but if you're comfortable controlling a car, it's very easily controllable Long in sport. Yeah. yeah. And so I was ripping it up a back road and just coming out of corners with neutral steer, slight opposite lock. And it was so balanced and so fun, um, especially considering it was on all terrain tires. Yeah. So uh, one question said, would you get the all terrain tires or would you get the standard road tires? I would get the, the whatever the big wheels are, I think, the mm -hmm. sport ones and a set of the all terrain tires. Two sets of wheels tires, baby. I just think you need something that, that you could just beat up off road that you don't care about and something that looks good on the street. And, and I like if I had to choose one set, I would choose what we had, I think, which I thought was good. Just yeah. to run through the drive mode some more then you know, then there's conserve mode, which lowers the vehicle all the way down. Um, runs just front wheel drive. I'm not exactly sure how they torque sleep the rear motors. they are four permanent magnet motors. So they can't be fully. Yeah. You can't really turn them off. Yeah. And so I don't fully understand how, how they're doing it. Obviously you can have permanent magnet motors run at a very low power level and not provide power, but you still need to have some sort of smoothing on them. Um, there are technologies with a, a, a clutch or a dog clutch disconnect. Um, but, and some form users said that they think it has a rear motors disconnect. I could not feel it connecting and disconnecting. You know, I was, I was going under partial load, going conserve and all purpose back and forth and didn't feel like it could chunk, could chunk. Now in EV6, it does a disconnect in Ionic 5, in Tycon, early software versions of Tycon, it would disconnect and you can feel that. So either their software is really good or it doesn't actually disconnect it, which would be my guess, but I don't know. There's definitely no torque uh, or, or mechanical connection between the two rear wheels from a clutch pack. Um, and at least the truck doesn't drive that way. And so conserve really is not needed most of the time. I feel like I overused conserve on the road trip. Mm -hmm. I would pull into chargers with five, six, seven percent state of charge. Rookie like, numbers. Yeah, and I'm like, why am I using conserve? I should have just burned the juice in all purpose <laughs> and just been more comfortable because it really rides like crap in conserve on the highway. Yeah, that does go to another question asking how it rides in different ride heights. Yeah, so the ride height, there's three that you want to keep the vehicle in 99% of the time. It's high, standard, and low. If you run highest or lowest on either end of that selection, you either have too much air in the, the air springs, if you will, in the air chamber that there's no room for compression because it's just so stiff. Yeah. Or you have no air in there and you're just riding on the bump stops <laughs> <laughs> and you're bouncing like a failed air suspension yeah, car down and the it road. It kind of looks like it too. Yeah, it <laughs> looks so low. Looks very awkward in when it's lowered out. I think. I mean, it's great that you can do it. I mean, th these are the things you can do as a new car company. BMW, Ford, Audi—they would never let a car leave with conserve mode tuned the way it is in the Rivian. Mm -hmm. But it does get you the best efficiency there's just a huge compromise when it comes to ride comfort yeah and you know it's not the end of the world you can still cruise no problem in in uh conserve mode i just would use it sparingly personally because you know it actually doesn't charge that badly i would just leave it in all purpose and then there's off-road modes which there's auto uh rock crawl rally and drift mm -hmm. didn't spend enough time in drift D did on did try it on pavement couple times allegedly, allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't it doesn't so basically the problem because you can't lock the two rear wheels together you can't um, basically send any more than 50 percent of the power to the outside rear wheel mm. because that's its 100 percent power output but if you had a locking diff you could just say make these suckers spin at the same and 
which would be great. And so you're giving up power on the rear axle by having a four motor system in an extreme situation. The truck's really balanced, but drift mode doesn't let you go to low suspension. And I feel like people are going to misuse it like me. <laughs> and just end up rolling. It's like a little <laughs> sketchy and standard to be sliding yeah, that it, thing around. On asphalt, it kind of just goes and it looks like that inner tire yeah, just like wants to lift. Lifting that just, front left tire if you're, if you're yeah, sliding. Yeah, hit a curb, you are flipped. <laughs> I mean, maybe the weight's really low in it, but like... It definitely is like, okay, Rivian's already putting a drift mode in there. And I get they don't want people drifting it on the pavement, but we're still going to do it. So just let me go lowest. Right. That's why, I mean, Tesla has their track mode. That you can use on the street. Yeah. And they have the technology to geofence it to tracks, <laughs> but that would suck. I'd sell my car immediately. <laughs> and so... Yeah, I thought Rally was the best for dirt roads. I did a lot of dirt road driving, you know, on that Moab trip and really kept it in Rally most of the time. And I could mat it coming out of corners, get some opposite lock. As soon as I would come back to, to kind of catch the car, it would, it would send a little bit more power to the front and really good drivetrain control when the vehicle's moving. The low speed stuff I thought needed calibration a little bit better, but rock crawl worked really well. I crawled up, um, in Moab and rock crawl was really impressed with how little wheel spin the vehicle had, which is what you want rock crawl. You don't want to, you know, you want max grip and not wheel spin. That's why I think the vehicle needs a mud snow mode. A lot yeah. of, um, yeah, I guess some of the guys that are more familiar with the truck than I am said that I should have tried, um, off-road auto would have been better for the snow than what I was doing in rally mode. I tried it but I didn't spend enough time. Like that's what you get in a week. Like there's only right. so much you can do. Yeah. Uh, and so it sounds like a lot of the guys that have had this in the snow, I won't mention their names cause they're, well, whatever, we'll just move on. But like, you know, <laughs> they, they're very familiar with the truck and they're like off-road auto is, is the move for snow. And so perhaps I should have tried that. Going uh, off of off-roading. Do you think the package is worth it? The off-road package? Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. I would do it. And then just get another set of wheels. Yep. Would you get, another set of Rivian wheels or like, I think that's the only thing available. I hope drew makes some wheels for it. That would look good. Yeah. I talked to drew about it. Um, drew, our friend drew owns Martian wheels, which is like an electric vehicle wheel company. He's making ID four wheels now, Tesla wheels, and it's all focused on purpose, right? It's to make your lap times faster in those cars. I was like, drew, you need to make like a really good sort of tire for Rivian. Cause it's an interesting compromise, but also needs really high stiffness. Um, and so yeah, branch out of the track and do some off road. Yeah. So he's designs. getting into it. He really fell in love with the Rivian and was like, this thing was he for drew to say something's better than a Tesla in his mind, or at least more capable yeah. is really impressive. Off it, of personal question off of, from when you went off roading, do you think it missed rock sliders with the off road package? Do you think it's necessary or it's just like not a concern for you? Well, you know how I treat my cars. Well, yes. <laughs> so the car is a rock slider. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the car will just, it'll go over anything. Do you think it should be included in the off road package? I did notice a little plastic trim hanging down on the passenger side. Yeah, but that doesn't do anything. It's no, not going to save your door. No, I think I may have broken it. Oh. Or it was broken when we got it. I don't know. I know. I only noticed it, and I forgot to tell anyone because I'm just thinking about it now for the first time. But it's already back at Rivian. They would have found yeah. out by now. Um, <laughs> sorry to anyone from Rivian listening to this podcast about your center cap on the wheel. I don't know how that got lost. But I'm not taking any fault for that because yeah. I did not take it. Things happen. And, yeah, I think I noticed that the plastic piece may have been dinged on the bottom. Like, it may have bo bottomed out on something. Um Rock sliders, yeah, but well, sure, just just drive the truck. Who gonna, cares? Beat it up. I'm going to be so interested in the aftermarket for the Rivian. I mean, there's so much potential for things to... I mean, Rivian themselves make a lot of stuff for it, but... Yeah, I'm excited to see front and rear bumper. There's not really wheel and tire thing you can do because the clearance in the and wheel also... There's not much room to put a bigger tire on it. Because technically, there are 34s or 35s that are 34s. on there. 34s. But it's on a 20-inch wheel. Yeah, yeah the which brake, is the brakes are like too big to fit smaller wheels. The brakes are really tires. good, actually. They do overheat. Like you can get them hot, but I was impressed. Yeah, They're no, better than they need to be. Yeah, well, yeah. So the brake calipers are too big to do smaller wheels with beefier tires, but the brake calipers are good size. But that's where Drew comes in because Drew figured out how to make 18s fit on a Model Three Performance. Yeah. Before anyone, I think. I mean, he's got that. You know, really maximize the barrel size. Uh, so, so we should let Drew have a go with some bead locking 18 inch or 19 inch wheels for it, um, would be kind of interesting. Yeah. The, there's one last drive mode just to touch on it is towing mode. 
Yeah, and there's the an, brake controller was cool. The integrated brake controller directly into the software controlled by the steering wheel was really slick. Yep. And it stiffens up the suspension and tows like a beast. It could tow 100,000 pounds. The, the limit is uh, braking, I think. Like, the Suspension. truck only weighs so much. I mean, the truck yeah. is expensive. Or <laughs> heavy. <laughs> <laughs> wow, my mind just jumped to the cost. I don't know. Truck is heavy, but yeah, you got suspension, brakes, and all those things. I think the truck's the best value for a dollar you can get. It is a good value. And that's, yeah. But that might make me sound a little bit distant from the common man. Even though that is me. But Value I mean, doesn't mean cheap. Right. For what you get, I mean, could you buy anything that does... Like, it's five cars in one. Yeah, that's the thing. It's a tow um, rig. Our spec a, was also 100000 with the with current price. With the new price. pricing, yeah, right around ninety five or something like that. Mm, yeah. It's worth every penny, even at the new pricing. Yeah, because, I mean, I fully spec basically Super Duty is like ninety five, and you can't do 0 to 60 in under 3 seconds. And you can't shred it up a back road. And then you get a Tycon with similar acceleration. You're 150. Yeah. yeah. Just for the straight line stuff. That's true. And then that Model 3 performance is a really good value as well. Yeah. Maybe not with the new pricing. I haven't looked. But anyway, let's continue with some questions. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this is something each of us could answer really quickly, mm -hmm. but uh, there's four parts. So the first one is top thing you loved about it. Just if you could narrow it down to one thing. I love how hard it rips on a back road for a truck. Uh, Simon? I think the look, it, it really is just completely different from most trucks on the market, especially when it comes to everyone here. Did you like all the attention it got? Yeah, it's I great. I love say, that. It, tur <laughs> it, it turned so many heads. Yeah, I that's mean, why it's, I, it's dangerous to drive it because other people are like texting. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we had some dudes slam on the brakes next to us to like, take a second look. Yeah. yeah, you get a lot of people that, like, just sit in your blind spot with, like, their camera out. And I'm like, I just want to not be in this situation in case you crash into me. I, yeah, I think it was overall design for me, too, inside and out. Like, the interior looked good. The exterior looked good. Some people say they hate the exterior. I just ignore them. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, the, I think it's a great-looking vehicle. Some Volvo vibes on the interior. It's like if Volvo made a truck. Yeah. I and I love that. Um, uh, so yeah, okay. Thing top thing you were disappointed by. Oof. <laughs> top thing I was disappointed by. So yesterday I was trying to think of things I don't like about it, and I have a list of everything I don't like about it. Okay. Will you want me to run through it? I mean, yeah. I, mean, I made it just on the the drive when we were going to drop it off. Uh, well, I guess it was just kind of final thoughts, more or less. Okay. So the broad capability stands out as the highlight of this truck to me. Yeah. Just everything it can do. The screen brightness is a pain in the ass. That, yeah, which could be addressed by software, but Easily. that's annoying. Yeah, so do you want to explain how this Riv works? Riven, if you're listening, um, so the screen can be night or day mode. Jordan, they've fallen asleep by now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's really interesting because... <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, screen can be night or day, and it's not bright enough in the day, and it's too bright at night. Well, it's, it's just that you have an automatic function for day and night, yeah. but not an automatic function for, for actual brightness. brightness. And if they just match the brightness to the exterior lighting conditions, then it would be much better. Yeah. Just do it like everyone else does it. <laughs> okay. Here's another thing I don't like. When you put the lights in automatic mode, there's no way to then have fog lights on. So what you have to do is rock the switch up to lights plus fog. Yeah. And you have to do that every time. But then when you get back in the truck, it leaves the lights on. And the truck looks really ugly with the headlights on. It looks yeah. much better with just the light bar lit up. And so you don't want to be driving around in the day with your headlights on. Because yeah. I like the, the really wide beam of the fogs. And yeah. so that was a little bit odd. Um, uh, lighting in cabin needs more. <laughs> I'm really good at writing. Yeah. <laughs> it needs well, more yeah, lighting. I guess we just we just got out of EQS. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> needs less we need than some that. EQS ambient lighting, Rivian. Yeah, but we need less than whatever EQS. Less, is yeah. That, yeah, that's somewhere a in between. Too much. But I just think not even ambient lighting visually, but just to light up surfaces. Like it was just really dark in there. Yeah, like so just to find things on the floor. Yeah, there was no footwell lighting. Well, there was a little no, bit. No, there's but, footwell but lighting, not but not in, in the, the center. center console. Yeah, right. And the the door pockets have lighting, but the door pockets kind of suck. Mm -hmm. Did you notice that at all? Yeah. I kind of like the idea that you can pull it out and fit a big water so bottle in there. they wanted a thin door to make, I guess, the cabin feel Bigger. nicer. And by the way, the door stays um, warm. It stays insulated with the cabin. Like when I touch the door and it's cold outside the Model 3, the door is cold. Yeah. And I think that's, a, that's pretty silly. Um, let's see what else we have. Drift mode. I just wrote drift mode. I don't know why. 
<laughs> Things it needs. Oh, dryness in the bed. I ran it through a high pressure car wash with the tonneau cover closed and it stayed dry. Wow. Okay. That was impressive. I did not expect that to be it. I mean, that the next thing was the top thing that surprised you. I don't know if that's the top thing, but <laughs> I think what the top thing that surprised me was how loud and amazing the motor sound. Oh, the that's... motor sound amazing. I was mostly surprised how that it beat a Model Three performance. <laughs> yeah. yeah, me too. The Model Three performance is fast. That's not yeah. a slow car. And, and it weighs 3,000 pounds less. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Motor noise was probably the top thing that surprised me in a good way. Like I was... You hear it. It's there. They didn't hide it. They don't put fake stupid sounds in that thing, thankfully. It's that's like the EV6. God, yeah. that's the dumbest <laughs> freaking stuff on the planet. Um, I didn't like how clunky the, the drivetrain was at low speed, though. Yeah. So like backing in and out of parking space and clunk, 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 clunk. it's very noticeable if you go over like a speed bump. It's just drivetrain slack that gets you mm-hmm. know basically and, and it's rocking as you apply forward torque or rearward pressure and regen doesn't help with that because regen is doing the opposite of what the vehicle is doing. Yeah. And so you're constantly in this rocking motion and and you can force the car to do it more. I show this in the driving review. Um, don't floor it in high suspension. <laughs> that makes one hell of a bad noise. <laughs> yep. So basically, as you would expect, when the suspension's aired up, you, you don't want to launch it because mm-hmm. I don't know what was up, but it sounded really bad when I did that, and so I backed <laughs> off. Uh, rear brake lights. Oh, yeah. so this bad. Is all, this so is all bad. Diamond's biggest disappointment. Yeah, yes. because he keeps following it. Yeah. So you have two small brake lights on the corner of the entire bar and then one up top but if you have a 10 on top you can't see that top brake light at all oh so you can't even see the third brake light that's the thing with the tent on it i that's when i realized what you were saying like with the tent off the third center brake light really good then you don't need the other ones but with i still think you need the other ones or yeah, I mean the other ones, they're small-ish. They're with, really, with the they're tent, like this size. With a tent or anything on, like it's not enough brakes light. Mm. Yeah, so I thought once you have the racks in the bed connected, have it send a code through the car to where the rear charging the light. Passive locks. How would it know? I'm not an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> we need a lower F1 light, like right above the trailer hitch. <laughs> and then like a ju- rain light? <laughs> where the... Uh, Charging bars for the rear, just make that a brake light once the tent's connected. So uh, for our audience who may not know where the charging light is in the rear, most of our audience didn't even know they had a charging light in the rear. <laughs> <laughs> not enthusiasts. Yeah. Um, <laughs> basically, the whole rear light bar is just a standard. Everyone's putting light bars in their car, and I hate yep. the trend. And then you have a blinking green light when you plug it in, a very thin strip along the tailgate section. Of yeah, the it's back. like basically... As wide as the LED strips truck guys do yep. for their fourth brake light. And that light. could act as an additional brake light yeah. in probably every scenario. I yeah, think I think it would help a lot because when it's, you're behind, a, yeah. behind the Rivian, you only really notice the two small ones and you're like, oh, wow, that's really small. Oh, wow, I should be braking. Yeah, <laughs> I would say that is a, a real critical issue that the, the lighting on the outside on the rear seems to... Be way too small i think the bars do look good the light bars generally speaking I, so i thought the f-150 lightning in person the light bars look really cheap yeah i, I'd hate, I agree I'd dislike them yep um and i like the, the base f-150 without the light bar yeah so xl and xlt don't have light bar um uh, whereas the lariat and limited do so Good yeah. job remembering the trim levels. I got it, man. <laughs> Finally got it. I always get limited and, and uh, platinum, platinum mixed up. Yeah, yeah. There's no platinum lightning, at least not yet. Um, so, oh, the motors are weird and neutral. So I was doing a lot of burning oh, juice. yeah, yeah. And remember, you, you felt this with yeah. me too because we were trying to burn down the battery pack, which means lots of throttle, put it in neutral, use friction brakes. Yeah, no put regen. Put it back yeah. into drive and goes to avoid regen. And that's just the quickest way to to burn the battery down, which yep. is honestly time was of the essence here. And so sorry about your brake pads, Rivian, but, uh, so the motors basically have this oscillation to them that, yeah. uh, you get these weird torque spikes in neutral, like the motors don't have proper smoothing. And so that's just motor control stuff that definitely needs to be worked out. Yeah. Not that anyone's cruising around in neutral, but it just felt really weird. And for them to even have like a tow charging 
function. I don't think they advertise, but you can tow charge any EV, and they've done this in long way up, and it seemed to be approved by Rivian. Yeah. Um, we uh, Another thing we wanted to do, of course, but we didn't have time. I also <laughs> wanted to charge it from the F-150 hybrid, but we yeah. didn't have time. Um, <laughs> and look at that efficiency. The... Yeah, the motors need to be smoothed out mm -hmm. when coasting in neutral. Uh, what else do I have here? The tonneau cover sounds terrible. It sounds really cheap. I tried not to use it very much because I'm like... We're always afraid it was going to break Yeah, while using and it. And I don't know if we should feel like it's going to break because I'm not honestly sure of any that have other than all of the Rivian show trucks at the first mile were like, yeah, don't touch the button. Yeah, I think they're still working out kinks, which is not good. But. I think it's now a very expensive option, so people don't order it. <laughs> <laughs> Three grand as Ooh. a deterrent. Wow, yeah. But it is nice to be able to close it. Yeah. Like, the idea is great. Yeah, it's nice that you can go, it goes into the bed, basically. Yes. Unlike most, that just, like, you have an extra couple inches that you lose your bed space. And what we found is you just, it's really easy. Maybe you just keep a, a brush in the gear guard so you could brush the junk off so that it doesn't end up where your tonneau cover is going. Yeah. Or yeah. just connect a hose for the air compressor. Yep. And and yep. The onboard air the compressor air is one of the best cool. parts of the truck. Yeah. Every car needs that. I aired up and down all four tires multiple times. Didn't overheat. Yeah. It was awesome. It'd be awesome to do some mountain biking out of this truck and then you can adjust your air pressures on the fly. Yeah. If only we had it for two weeks. Yep. The things like, <laughs> and at the end of two weeks, if only we had it for three weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, exactly. But I feel like we got the big stuff out of the way. Yeah. So, we have the most know, important yeah. stuff. Uh, auto climate control sucks. I'm going to, I won't say what, what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> we, we need to keep it somewhat clean most of the time. It sucks. It is so annoying to use auto climate control in this thing because it just blows the fan at you. Mm -hmm. What we really need are three levels of auto climate control. Yeah. Which like is becoming the standard in the automotive industry. I need three levels of steering wheel heat too. Yeah. The, the XC40 recharge has that. Yes. It goes from burning hot to not, but great heated <laughs> steering wheel in terms of full coverage. Yeah. Yep. Uh, what I mean, else? I got one last. I got one last thought that I wrote down on the drive. I mean, yeah, we haven't done final thoughts yet. But, yeah, uh, but here we go. I mean, we have most of them. But I mean, this question actually: um, Do we know if maps, navigation, and charger locations work when out of cell range? Because a lot of times, you, sh in theory, would be out adventuring. Yes, it it can route without cell service. Cool. Yep. But I don't know about the charger. I think it does. I didn't spend enough time out of cell service, but it definitely did map routing out of service. It said, we can't connect right now. Would you like to route with the onboard situation? Mm. And I said, yes, we'll do that. Uh, I was going to say the one last thing that I thought about was the key, the just entry exit of the vehicle and the key range. Oh, yeah. The key range is not great. So the, I think the truck's designed to use the cell phone as a key. But we didn't have access to that because it was... It's too early for them to figure out how to give multiple users to one truck. It's kind of being set up for it because you can go in the menus of the truck and see multiple users, um, but you can only have one at the time. And so Rivian couldn't figure out how to get us the phone app, basically, which I thought was really weird because I'm like, we really need you the phone just app. just give us the phone. Yeah, or just give us the phone, yeah. <laughs> so Yeah, give a phone to the press. <laughs> I think they just wanted to monitor us. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Yeah, probably. I don't know. So... Anyway, they gave us uh, three different options of getting in the vehicle. They gave us the best key in the world, which is carabiner, even though it's upside down. Yeah. And it's a really good key, though. Yeah, it looks great. It's wonderful. I think the, all the buttons and stuff, it's all reversed and upside down, but the key idea is really good. And it's a wonderful little orange thing, carabiner. You can use it as a fidget toy. It can't sustain any weight, but it's just a really nice key. It's for your pant loop. Yeah. And then they gave us a bracelet. I love that idea. But that's because you're, wear, you're wearing a bracelet. Yeah. but That's really... You're wearing a watch. Yeah, it's just a watch. Yeah. That's a bracelet. You're wearing a fashion item. This is a useful tool. So big would that... Fashion guy, yeah, <laughs> big, big fashion guy. So would that bracelet, though, because it's a useful tool you can get in your car. Okay. Why would you use anything else? I you never have to worry hate, about losing your keys. I hate taking my phone on a run or my key on a run. Like, if, I, if my key could just be... On me so maybe the there's the disconnect You're not yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle is not the runner per se so <laughs> <laughs> maybe I just am not the use case for this yeah. <laughs> and then they also gave us two key cards yeah two key cards those are good nice yeah. key cards nicer than Tesla's key card 
and they're white. They're the exact opposite of Tesla, yeah. <laughs> which is cool because I had it right next to my Tesla key card and I knew which one was which. And I think a lot of Rivian owners will own a Tesla. So it worked really well, actually. There's a lot of Tesla stuff in this truck. The bongs, when you turn on the ding, 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 it's identical to Tesla. Mm -hmm. It's, the steering wheel controls. Are, yeah, the steering wheel controls are identical pretty much, although the speed and distance are reversed from autopilot, which is kind of annoying. I wanted to use the scroll wheel for speed and not the left and right for right, speed right. adjustment. Um, and yeah, autopilot, their driver plus situation is activated the same way autopilot is. Which makes it very nice and simple. It was just like, it's going to be so easy for someone to transition out of a Tesla into this truck. Everything's exactly where you want it. Right. And we have some friends, you know, Don and Marianne in North yep. Carolina. And remember when she was getting the Model Y, she was like, everything's so different than the X, and I just want every car to be the same so I don't have to relearn something. Aren't they basically the same, though? No, the X had the autopilot down here. Oh, right, right. And and that was like a big pain point. And, and that was the first time I really was exposed to people wanting that. Anyway, so this one's good in, in terms of simple. Tesla owner stuff. Yeah. The only thing I didn't like about how simple it was, was your temperature controls. Why? Just, what do you mean? You got to keep pressing the button. You can't push and hold? You push and hold, it goes to high. Yeah, I don't want to do that. I just want to push and hold so it goes up by like 5 or 10, and then you just let go. Hmm, you want it to, to, to creep up. Right. I did not have that complaint. You just had a dial. Yeah, so you came up with a great idea for the temperature controls, which is like a little scroll wheel dial right underneath the screen, like a nice camera backing of some mm -hmm. kind, like uh, one of these light adjustment situations, just right underneath the screen. Anyway, what else you got, Jordan? Um, the last one here is like, uh, actually a bunch of people have piggybacked onto it. Just wanting to know what the off-road package actually includes because no one could really get straight answers from Rivian. Really? And I don't know. Yeah. I didn't look. Yeah. We I, just took the truck and did what we did. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess a request for next time is to like get it up on a lift and look underneath. And well, like, that was the plan, but, but uh, we didn't know exactly what the capabilities of our lift were. Yeah. I was so, worried uh, our lift could not lift the truck because we put it in the bay. We have a oh, lift yeah. downstairs. And like, I think our lift could, I think do. they're rated for four ton, but it didn't say anything on there about it being four it's ton. It's not the beefiest lift in the world. It doesn't look yeah. good. Yeah. And I was like, we, don't we break just it. got this truck on day one. We just got this truck. We just got this office. We don't want both I to heard break. You <laughs> little pucks for the Rivian, but eh. like not our truck. So yeah. <laughs> there's pinch welds. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. I just, I got a little, little gun shy of putting it on the lift. And, and if Timon's not, 100% in, then I'm really not 100% <laughs> Yeah, usually Tyron's like, full send, bro. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, that's pretty much all the questions here. Um, and I guess, you know, the last part of that one question that asked about, basically about our final thoughts um, was like, what would you do on our 2T or whatever the second version would be? Like, what would we improve? Uh, smaller brakes to fit a smaller wheel. Bigger brakes for more performance. I'm focusing here on the off-road wow, section. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only truck that can haul up Wrist Canyon faster than almost so, any Plaid could. Off-road package, could you go a bit more conservative on the brakes? Yeah, let's say off-road package bigger. made a smaller brake, and then you have your performance package to where you have the same size brakes or this even is bigger. This Nürburgring spec. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> where it just is slammed all the time <laughs> on race slicks. <laughs> yeah, but Nurburgring, you want the suspension to work. It's actually got to be up and soft. Otherwise, you'll bottom it out. You know, there's section where we were catching air. Yeah, I was there. We yeah. need the Rivian on the Nurburgring. <laughs> yeah, we got to bring the Rivian to the Nurburgring. Yeah. All right. So final, yeah. Final. We're going to need more than a week for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> final thoughts. Uh, I mean, I think it's amazing. Uh, yeah, let's see what forest green, ocean coast interior. That's the spec. No, nope, launch for me. green. Kyle likes launch green. Darker green's better. I launch like green is me. yellow too. Compass yellow is nice. But I could never pull that off. I could. I would no. Do, the I yellow would, is a no wait, go. You know what looked really good was an, was the all blacked one on the twenty two inch sport wheels. Oh yeah, that did look that good. looked hot. Yeah. When you put it in low, not lowest on the big wheels, blacked out. I was like, wow. Yeah. An R one S is going to be the new Range Rover. Yeah, I'm going to see if my dad wants to buy one. Yeah, that'd be cool. I can't wait to see the R1S. Yeah, I mean, things to change would just be like soft, some software stuff, some drivetrain tuning a little bit for the low like speed. Weird like weird oddities and like mostly when it's fully loaded. But for I don't think people are going to push the truck as hard as we did in generally. And most people will just go wide open throttle in a straight line and it's tuned really well for that. 
Yeah, there's no major deal breakers. It's just no a, lot deal breakers. Of, a lot of stuff can be improved by software. The Even charging those... is kind of the, yeah the, one of the weakest. That's points. a major thing I and think I would even, see in a newer. We haven't talked about the driver assistance yet. Oh yeah, yeah. Driver assistance was incredibly glitchy. Yeah. When it was on, it was wonderful. So I have very high hopes for the system, but it requires pre-mapping, and I'm not sold that pre-mapping is the answer. But from a user perspective, it's really annoying. And the truck would tell me when I was on roads that were not pre-mapped, but I was on a lot of roads that were pre-mapped and it just wouldn't activate because of a glitch. Yeah. So again, I think we're two, one or two software updates away from this thing being dialed in. Yep. And I'm glad we got the truck when we did. I'd love to get it back again, you know, or borrow a viewer's car or one of our friend's cars. We now have family members with them too. Like everyone I know is getting one of these. So I don't think it'll be hard to make Rivian content. There's so much to make. And on it, of though, course yeah. we're in the market for one. Yeah. Um, it's just a couple of software updates. The driver plus though was really great. And I like that the wheels capacitive and not torque. That's how I it think should to, be. Yeah. Torque is a sketchy. Your torque is really Because the sketchy. first time I ever drove, I think it was your model three from going from your house to the track. It was an autopilot. I was like, yeah, no big deal relaxing and then someone pulls in front of me i go to make a lane change and i'm like oh yeah, you gotta can't. go past the buffer so you like get hit and then when you do go past the torque limitation you're like got so much inertia already that you're like yeah, exactly i was like oh okay that's not how you're well, supposed to do it i remember when not in this model three but one that we had earlier uh Alyssa was driving it we were going to wilmington north carolina and she was making a lane change and the vehicle decided, because we had enhanced autopilot in that car and made lane changes, and it decided it wanted to go back to the other lane. Like it just freaked <laughs> out. And so she took the wheel and like cranked it so hard. And I was like, oh crap. And we started sliding. I had to reach over and like correct the slide. Oh no. <laughs> and so <laughs> then I was like, we're going to spend more time on track. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. Well. I mean, I think that pretty much wraps up. Let's Final thoughts. Really, the best thing to, come, to keep in mind is Rivian gave us this vehicle with no restrictions, which no automaker ever really gives us restrictions. We usually, yeah, for people who don't know, we typically have about 500 miles and a week. Yeah, and we could do a lot with that. But Rivian, how many miles did we do? 3,200. And yep. we can do that with other, we put 10,000 on a Taycan once. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, we've done, you know, multiple over 5,000 mile loans for special stories and stuff yeah. like this. But, you know, we told Rivian, hey, we want to run this through our test. They gave us the vehicle. They never said, hey, don't, don't do this, don't do that, yeah, don't, don't like launch it off road or don't jump it. I think, the, like, yeah, I think the only thing they said is don't jump it. I don't even remember them telling me. They may have told you that. I, th- I never <laughs> heard it. Sorry. <laughs> um, no, I didn't jump it, actually. I wanted to, but it just... The suspension It's, it's did... hard to find a soft landing for a car jump. Yeah, for sure. And you don't want to turn into the, these YouTubers crashed yeah. Olivia and then we're just screwed. These YouTubers yeah. jumped a Model S in yeah. California. <laughs> oh, God, that was crazy. <laughs> okay, so um, basically Rivian gave us the truck full confidence. Do whatever you want. No restrictions. Go have fun with it. And the truck performed flawlessly. Yeah. There, I do want to talk about a couple issues I experienced, though. There were three. There's wind noise from the passenger side mirror. Or yep. not mirror, but um, the, uh, the, win- the, the window seal was. So rough. that's an yeah. issue with this particular truck. Yeah. Probably not on others. No, definitely not. Then the last day we had it, literally while I was going out to film the driver assistance review, the map and GPS and cell connection failed. all failed. It was GPS and cell, mm-hmm. and so I tried the soft reset. I tried a hidden secret hard reset situation that they asked me not to tell anyone about, and I won't because you know it doesn't matter. Up, to down, me. left, down, down, B, yeah. <laughs> brake, <laughs> gas. There was like the next level of reset before yeah. you start pulling twelve volt battery stuff, yeah. which you can pull the the. It has two twelve volt batteries. You can disconnect the fireman's loop. I explained it in the first video. Pull the negative terminals. Um, then re- you know, let it sit for 20 minutes, reconnect the fireman's loop, put both negative terminals back on at the same time mm. uh, so that the truck has constant voltage on startup. And then they said it's just going to throw a whole bunch of codes and you'll have to bring it in anyway. But that might that's like the hardest reset. There's one in between. Um, and then, um, then it didn't recover from that the whole way back to Denver. 
So I was kind of bummed about that because I really wanted to shoot the drive. We had every, all the driver assistance systems in one place. Yeah. And so I've already, perhaps when we have another Rivian come, we can finish that up because I filmed with some vehicles. And maybe they'll have improved it a bit by then. Who knows? Well, the system's amazing when yeah. it's on, like no issues with it at all. It doesn't do lane changes, but everything, you know, lane centering is competent. Yeah. And then the last issue I had was with the suspension. Mm-hmm. And um, multiple times the compressor got hot. And it basically wouldn't lift the vehicle up. Now, granted, this was after us either beating the crap out of it or raising lower, raising lower, raising lower. And at one point, I raised it all the way to max. It didn't quite make it into max, but the car (laughs) thought it was in max. And it limited my top speed to 20 miles an hour. And I'm, like, about to merge on the highway. So I, like, quickly pull over. And it won't let it go. It said you need to let the air compressor cool off before you lower the suspension. And it's not uncommon for air suspension stuff to overheat this happens in a whole bunch of cars this is why you went to a steel spring setup for right. example yeah and um you know i've experienced it on range rovers and and tycon actually and some other things and um basically the car was locked at 20 miles an hour so i had to limp it over to the charger i let it sit for two minutes and then it was fine but you would think it could purge air when it was hot right you know so that could use a little bit of a better fail safe so you don't get locked at 20 miles an hour in max height i understand that was probably a unique scenario uh, and the suspension faulted out in Moab at the worst possible time. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> when I was on the back, when I was on like a downhill like this, I think it was just overloaded. And it said like service suspension, you know, like we're, a, everything's ruined. And then as soon as the car leveled out, it was fine. It sounds like a McLaren. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think it was just under too much load for too much time. The truck performed flawlessly. There was no issue with performance. Yeah, it seemed like. It just came up with the error. Just went, like the brakes wow. came up with service brakes immediately when we got them too hot. The Tesla does the same yeah, thing. Yeah, every car should do that. Yeah, yeah of course. And, and some <clears> cars <throat> will throw up all the forward collision warning stuff. Everything throws up warnings when you push it to its limits. The Rivian was no exception. Nothing broke. Uh, and we really put it through its paces. Yep. Yeah. That's my time with it. I just am I'm blown away by the competence and the breadth of capability and the build quality. Not one squeak and rattle, even after bombing this thing under some pretty aggressive roads. Felt really good. What do you guys think? I mean, I've <laughs> thought it was amazing. I was very impressed with the capability of the truck for being 7,000 pounds. And you're not an EV guy. We should uh, this Yeah, no. It. EV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the only thing, like... I was disappointed by was range while towing, but who's also going to tow 7,400 pounds with a Rivian? But Probably remember, nobody. We tested this. It's not the weight. It's the arrow. Hmm. The trailer with the, with the wind thing did worse than the V nose. Yeah, but I still, the weight has something to do. Yeah, with of it. course yeah, the weight yeah. does have an effect. I'm towing just, anything yeah. will affect it for sure. Yeah. But you liked it. Yeah. I thought what do you think of the spec? Um, I personally wouldn't go with white. I'd go for the darker green. And so forest green like Jordan. Yeah. Yeah. Personally, this is the... But I keep that interior color because I hate a white interior. You Wrong. wouldn't get forest edge <laughs> interior? Or wait, you wouldn't get green with a green interior? No, that's terrible. <laughs> I actually think so, too. I'm not that's people that. that get like a white car with a white interior. Just, oh, I think that looks good. No. Or like a beige Audi with a beige interior. Yeah, this as was, long as it's a wagon, then it's fine. This was the one spec I was... Didn't care. I so yeah. On paper, I was like, "This is the worst spec," and I, I still so liked too. it. Uh, like, I liked it a lot. That's how person. good it is. Um, but I would have preferred, you know, different color, different. I interior. heard the ocean interiors are delayed. Yeah, that's what I heard. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, "Wouldn't bother me." Uh, yeah. No, I'm smitten. I mean, that's a hard vehicle to give back. So it is. But I'm, I'm actually glad it's back. It's very relieving. That's good. Yeah, that because you can sleep now. Yeah. We, yeah. For anyone else, they'd be like, no, don't take it from us. And Kyle's like, please take it. I need a break. <laughs> so we're just vibing with it. It was just the worst week to have it because everyone was on vacation. We had tons of drive programs and we were just spread too thin. Yeah, it was a lot, but it was great. Good time. So, I mean, yeah, that pretty much wraps up our cumulative thoughts. I mean, there's lots of videos out and more coming <laughs> that were still in the queue to be edited and more we'll make when we get another Rivian because yeah, I feel like I felt like we did almost everything and then talking through it, it's like, Oh, we did like half the stuff we were doing yeah. originally. So yeah, but yeah, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And, uh, we'll see you guys. Another one, go check out the out spec podcast on all the podcast platforms and all the reviews videos coming soon.